I'm going to introduce a new trick now, which I hope you enjoy. Um, so it's a new section in my lecture notes and it's called Rapidity. And Velocity is the name of the section. By the way, that's my email address. Somebody was asking me for it in case you want my solutions. Um, <coughs> so Rapidity is um, just another word for speed, really, in English. It's not a word that's used very often. Um, it makes me smile because I don't know if you've seen any of the Jacques Tati films, Monsieur Culo. Anybody seen any of those? Maybe not. But he has rapidité, he's French, and he has rapidité is his motto. So it always makes me smile because he's very funny. Anyway, rapidity and velocity. Uh, I'm going to introduce a different way of measuring this velocity. Okay. Imagine that um, in your spaceship, like in your car, you have a, a, an instrument which tells you your speed, in the case of a car, and you can easily imagine that your spaceship has an instrument like that, telling you your speed relative to some other spaceship. Um, suppose somebody got inside that instrument and changed it. Right, so that it's not measuring speed directly, it's measuring some function of speed. Of course, you want that function to be continuous and one-to-one, -one, otherwise it's not going to be very useful. But you could imagine somebody <coughs> making a new instrument that didn't display speed, it displayed some continuous one-one function of speed. Why would you do that? seems like a strange thing to do. That's what we're going to do. First of all, note that uh, V over C satisfies those inequalities. And define um, <coughs> the rapidity which I'm going to denote by the Greek letter phi, by hyperbolic tan of phi equals V over C. Or in other words, phi is the inverse hyperbolic tan of V over C. So that's the function. And I've got an exercise, I've already told you part of the answer. What properties, the exercise is, what properties of this function am I using in order for this to make sense? Okay, I've already told you the answer, at least part of it. So I'll not say any more. So this number phi is related to V, right? And we can use this number phi instead of phi. So instead of putting v there, I could have put phi. Phi would not be the relative velocity between the two frames of reference. It would be something a little bit more subtle. But it's related to the relative velocity. And it's called rapidity. So why is that a good idea? Seems like a stupid thing to do. We just play around with gamma and this equation here, and we discover the following things, which I recommend you to check for yourselves, please. So cosh, the hyperbolic cosine of phi, if you calculate that, well, what is that? It's 1 over the square root of uh, 1 minus the hyperbolic tan squared of phi. And if you calculate that, it turns out you get gamma. 
Okay. It's not obvious, maybe, but it's true. Actually, it is obvious. Yes, it is obvious, because that's v squared over c squared. Right, so that is gamma. <coughs> so, okay, we begin to think, okay, so maybe, that's, maybe there's something in this. So let's look at the shrine, the hyperbolic sine of phi. It's the square root of cosh squared minus 1. So that's the square root of gamma squared minus 1. And if you work out what that is, you get v gamma over c, which is an expression that keeps appearing in all of our equations. So that's another useful... So these are both useful expressions, and they come naturally in terms of the rapidity. <coughs> and uh, you'll remember that um, the definition of these functions... Um, so cosh phi is e to the phi plus e to the minus phi over 2, and shine phi is e to the phi mi uh, minus e to the minus phi over 2. Okay, so those are the definitions, just the standard definitions of the hyperbolic functions. Um, and therefore, if you, <coughs> if you add them together, e to the phi is um, is that plus that, so it's gamma into 1 minus v over c. And you can simplify that, it's this expression. Uh, we haven't seen that one yet, but it, it, it's also going to be useful for us. Okay. So I hope you, at this stage, you think, oh, that's curious. Oh, maybe, this, maybe this isn't quite so mad after all. Perhaps there's something related to the structure of these equations. Uh, so let's find out what. Let's write down those equations in terms of phi. We're going to write down the Lorentz transform in terms of phi, and we find this c t dashed equals minus x hyperbolic sine of phi plus c t hyperbolic cosine of phi x dashed equals x hyperbolic cosine of phi minus ct hyperbolic sine of phi. And of course, <laughs> y dashed is still y, and z dashed is still z. Okay, I think you'll agree that this is rather beautiful. It's very much like a rotation, but except you're not using the trigonometrical functions, you're using the hyperbolic functions. But it's a very beautiful form. In a sense, it looks more natural. In some sense, it's a little bit more natural than this. Maybe it's a question of taste. We could write that in the form of, <coughs> to make it even more clear that it's like a rotation, we could write it as a matrix. Is that correct? No. Yes, it is. Is that correct? Yeah, that looks right. Sure. Yeah. So it really does look a, bit, it's a little bit like a hyperbolic version of a rotation. <coughs> OK, so we now think, yes, we're, we're doing something good here. We don't quite know what yet, but we're, something interesting is happening. So it, it was worth doing the <coughs> transformation from velocity to rapidity. It's going to simplify rather dramatically some of our, <coughs> our 
some of the calculations which we're going to have to do. So in particular one thing we can do is we can take these four equations here and we can, uh, let me think, I want to I want to add these two together. So CT dashed plus X dashed, if you add them together then you get, it turns out, e to the minus phi times ct plus x. Ah, <coughs> gosh, why, why, why is that? So if we add them together, then in the... Uh, is that right? Have I got it right? Yeah, I think that's right. Um, we're going to get CT cosh minus shine and we're going to get X cosh minus shine. That's right. So that, and that's where the E to the minus phi comes from. It's cosh minus shine. Okay. If we subtract them, we get E to the plus phi, I think. Yeah. Oops. They turn out to be really useful. Now we can use these equations, we can use these four equations instead of these four equations, we use these four equations to demonstrate the thing I claimed an hour ago. Uh, I claimed that that was true. In fact, it's, it's over there. I didn't write it very well there, did I? It's that. Um, <coughs> and now, this part is easy anyway. We want to show that that's the same as that. And now it's obvious, because we simply multiply these two equations, and we get th this expression. And when you multiply the right-hand sides, these cancel, and you get this expression. Okay. So, uh, as I promised you earlier, it's possible to prove this equation from here. It's quite a lot of algebra, but changing to rapidity makes it completely trivial. So this is obviously a good thing to do. <coughs> <coughs> um, for later reference, I'm going to note that we often use this equation in the infinitesimal form. In other words, c squared dt dashed squared minus dx squared minus dy squared uh, dashed, I mean, dashed minus dz dashed squared equals c squared dt squared minus dx squared, minus dy squared, minus dz squared. So that's um, just by taking the infinitesimals. That's an important equation as well for later. We'll need that later. OK, good. Uh, <coughs> so now I'm going to rub out our faithful old Lorentz transform here for a moment. I'm sure we'll see it again soon, but and we're going to do some more work with these rapidities. Yeah. I don't know who first used that word, but I imagine that um, he or she was looking for a word which was different from velocity, but meant more or less the same thing. And rapidity is exactly that. Rapidity means speed, actually. And so it was just a you speed would have been very confusing, right? So they needed another word. And so that was the only reason. There's no other significance to it. 
OK, so now what we're going to do is um, exercise 15. Uh, <coughs> so we're going to prove that the composition of two standard Lorentz transforms I can't be bothered to write that down two of these um, with rapidities phi 1 and phi 2 is a Lorentz transform with rapidity well Let's find out. Let's, if you've got my lecture notes, you'll know the answer, but is the rapidity what? So what, what do I mean here? What do I mean? So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to use, instead of velocity here, I'm going to use the rapidity parameter, and s and s dashed will have rapidity phi 1. And I'm imagining that there's another frame of reference here, which is s double dashed, y double dashed, x double dashed, z double dashed, and its rapidity relative to this one is phi 2. Okay, so s dashed is moving with respect to s in standard configuration with rapidity phi 1. S double dashed is moving with respect to S dashed in standard configuration with rapidity phi 2. So the question is, what's the rapidity that S double dashed is moving with respect to S? <coughs> OK, so we use... Uh, <coughs> We use this matrix here. This is the y's and the z's are all doing nothing, so I can forget about y and z. Okay. So uh, this is the these are the s coordinates t and c uh, c t and x. These are the s dash. So this is phi one here. That's the first Lorentz transformation taking us from s to s dashed. The second one will look the same, except it's phi 2. And here we've got s dashed, so it's C T dashed X dashed. <coughs> okay? Now to find this in terms of this, we have to multiply those two matrices. So X C T double dashed, X double dashed is going to whoops. Is going to be Two matrices multiplied together times ct x, and those two are uh, the phi two one here is here, cosh phi two blah blah blah, and the phi one goes here, cosh phi one blah blah blah. Right, that means minus shine phi two minus shine phi two cosh phi two, and the same with phi ones. I'm just write, multiplying those two matrices. So you multiply those two matrices, and this is, I'm probably getting to an exercise, am I? The, the oh, it is an exercise, yeah. So, in the, sorry? In the lower right corner, it's a little bit confusing because. Yeah. OK, so this is. It's not minus, it is the same. No, no, you're right, yeah. thank you. And I'll, I'll write the whole thing out. 
Whoops. You may not be able to read my hasty. Yeah, anyway, it's those two matrices multiplied together. Uh, <coughs> I'm actually doing an exercise. Did I? Oh, yeah, I am. Here I am. I'm exercise 15. I realise <laughs> these aren't my lecture notes. These are my solutions to my exercises. So I'll let you finish. It would be a very nice thing for you to do. You multiply these two matrices. That's easy. They're only two by two matrices. And then you use some of the identities that these hyperbolic functions satisfy. They obey, as I'm sure you know, they obey identi addition identities similar to, but a little bit different from, the trigonometric functions. There are some minus signs that are different, basically. So multiply the matrices, use the identities, and I'll tell you the answer, but it's great for you to do it for yourselves, just to check. What you get here is this. You get that matrix there. <coughs> In other words, you've got another, you've discovered two things. Namely, first of all, you've got another Lorentz transformation. Because it's of exactly the same form as these. The only thing which is different is that the rapidity has changed. That's the first thing you've discovered. The second thing you've discovered is that to get the resultant rapidity of this frame with respect to this one, you just add, okay, these two numbers. So rapidities add, which is very beautiful. It tells us something else as well. If the rapidities add, the velocities certainly don't add. <laughs> because the relationship between velocity and rapidity was extremely non-linear. It was the hyperbolic tan function. So, so we're going to find out what the addition formula for velocities is, but it turns out to be most elegant to do it via validity. Uh, sorry, rapidity. <laughs> um, so rapidities add. So the answer to this is phi 1 plus phi 2. So the exercise says, I've done it for you, basically. Well, I didn't do the manipulation here, but... That's good for you to do. Okay, so that's one of the nicest um, uh, consequences of introducing the idea of rapidity. You can deduce very quickly, but again you're using the uh, SR1, the relativity principle. You can deduce from this that these standard Lorentz transformations form a group. Um, and, and essentially, it, it, it's just the additive group on reals, isn't it? It's isomorphic to the additive group on the reals. Um, you, you can easily see that the zero rapidity is the identity. If you negate the rapidity, you've got the inverse. If you add rapidities, that's your composition. Um, and it's evidently associative as well, because it's a transformation. So you can see that the, in fact, it's my exercise 16, says deduce from this that the standard Lorentz transforms, not the full Lorentz group, but these transforms form their own subgroup of the full Lorentz group. And it's sort of obvious once you've seen exercise 15. OK, let me just um, pause for a minute in case there are questions. Yes, there is. short-sighted but uh, could this uh, additive group tell us that uh, this concept of rapidity is something some other natural definition that could replace velocity um, yes um, it's a you could sort of imagine I think that 
the aliens, our friends on Andromeda, when they first um, started moving around in machinery, for some reason they never, the little instruments in their machines that measured how fast they were going, they always used rapidities, they never used velocities. I'm not sure how convincing this is, but maybe they, maybe they did, they always used rapidity. And for them, special relativity would be very natural. <laughs> okay. It would be completely natural. <laughs> and they would think, well, oh, that's curious. If you take the inverse hyperbolic tan, you get this strange notion of velocity. <laughs> yeah, so it, it, it's quite striking how natural the Lorentz transforms look when you use rapidity instead of velocity. Um, well, I just glanced at my clock and um, we're doing very well. We're, my lecture notes only go up to, I think, page 20 or 21 or something. And we're already now on um, page 9. So we're doing well. So I'm going to stop for today and we'll do some more. I mean, some of the later pages are a little bit more difficult than some of the earlier ones. But even so, we're doing very well. So we'll stop here for today and pick it up tomorrow.